What's going on? Welcome to Explore the Adventure. Today, I wanted to talk about a really frightening experience that I actually experienced recently. And I'm not telling this story to frighten you, but I do believe that it's my responsibility to share what I experienced. This whole channel is about recording vlogs of my astral projection experiences and my growing that I'm experiencing uh, while exploring this whole realm of astral projection. So I'm not going to dive immediately into what exactly happened. Instead, I'm going to try and tell a story leading up to certain events that I experienced and I thought that you would be interested in it. So on the afternoon of the event, the afternoon that the event happened, which it happened in the morning. I remember still feeling afraid, still feeling frightened, but I was going through my uncle's stuff. If you haven't watched any of my earlier vlogs, uh, my uncle actually passed away recently. So I was going through some of his journals. And when I opened up one of his journals, a little bookmark from the East West Bookshop fell out. And I thought, huh, that's interesting. I remember that place. I used to go there with my uncle a lot. I opened up another book. And out of that other notebook that belonged to my uncle, again, the East West Bookshop bookmark fell out. And I thought that was interesting. Later in the day, when I decided to go grocery shopping, I saw these pears. Now, real quick, at the East West Bookshop, when my uncle and I went, we would see this man named Scout Bartlett. Now with Scout, I don't want to call him psychic. There's too many negative connotations uh, with the word psychic. So I'll call him intuitive. I'll call him intelligent. I'll call him, he is an energy worker. So my uncle and I, I remember us going to the East West Bookshop to see him talk. So when I was at the grocery store, and I saw those pears, they weren't just ordinary pears. They were Bartlett pears. So that got me thinking about the East West Bookshop and that got me thinking about Scout Bartlett even more. And uh, I just felt the deep urge to go see Scout. After my uncle passed, I knew that he wanted me to go see Scout. I knew he wanted me to go talk to Scout. But the times where I've looked him up online, the times where I went to his Facebook page, the times where I went to his website, uh, it didn't really specify when he would be at the East West Bookshop. It did specify that you could schedule events with him, you could schedule meetings with him, but I didn't want to schedule something far out into the distance. I wanted to see him now. I wanted to see him within this week. So interestingly enough, due to a certain like turn of events, Due to certain circumstances, I actually had to go down to a city that was near the East West Bookshop. Now keep in mind, uh, the East West Bookshop is actually about a 45 minute drive from where I live, so it's not exactly an easy drive. But I happened to have to go to a city that was actually next to the East West Bookshop because I actually had to take care of a fix-it ticket. So I drove down to that city, I took care of that ticket, and then I drove down to the a city that the East West Bookshop was located. I remember parking. I walk into the bookshop. I look around for signs of Scout being there. To be honest, when I was driving to that bookshop, I kept telling myself, like, there's a chance that Scout might not even be there, but I have to check it out. So I'm there at the bookshop and I go to the front store clerk. And I ask him, uh, does Scout happen to be here today? And the clerk, to my surprise, actually says, yes, Scout is here today. I get really happy. I think to myself, yes, like I knew I was supposed to be here. But then as the, uh, the clerk is looking at the schedule, he says, actually, Scout's not available. He's fully booked for today. So I kind of like drop my shoulders. I'm kind of disappointed. Uh, I thought to myself, you know what, maybe I didn't come here for a reason. I knew it was too good to be true. But then the clerk, interestingly enough, he looked at the schedule again and he said, wait a minute, 
there's actually an availability later tonight. So I immediately booked that availability just so I could see Scout. And I was so happy because these synchronistic events actually meant something. It was cool. I had no clue that he was going to be there that day. And apparently, apparently, like, there wasn't even supposed to be a free opening for me. So I saw Scout later that night. Now here's a quick disclaimer. Uh, a lot of the things that I'm about to talk about, uh, if you're not into spirituality, if you're not really into uh, ghosts, entities, if you're not really into, I guess, any of those uh, new age concepts, this, what I'm about to talk about will either offend you or you won't understand it or you'll call bullshit on it. Um, if you're willing to watch it with an open but I guess skeptical mind, take it with a grain of salt, feel free to keep watching. So I met with Scout. Now, one of Scout's abilities is not only is he able to deeply read into people and deeply read into, I guess, how they work, but he's able to make connections to the other side. So the first thing that I did when I met with him was I checked up on my uncle and he made contact and we spoke about that for a bit. I won't go into detail about that. But interestingly enough, somehow in the conversation, we started talking about Robert Monroe and journeys outside of the body and far journeys. And Scout told me that in Robert Monroe's second book, he actually talks about in reference to his experience with astral projection, Robert actually says that everything that he has ever experienced that he perceived to be evil was actually not in fact evil. It was nothing more than his fears. So I thought that was interesting that Scout brought that up. Because later in the conversation, that led to me telling him about exactly what I experienced. And so then I told him the story. I told him the story about the thing that I saw. So I was at my girlfriend's place. I was up in her room and uh, I decided to sleep a bit earlier that night. I decided to sleep at around 12. It was just an average day, just a normal day. Nothing really stood out about it. So I fell asleep and I reached that point where my body was asleep, but a part of me began to become conscious. Now, I hope that this doesn't creep you out, but sometimes when I fall asleep, I'll sleep with my eyes open. I'm not sure why, but one funny thing is that one of my fears in the past was what if I fell asleep and while my eyes were open, what if I just saw something completely terrifying, something really fucked up. Funny enough, what ended up happening was I was on the side of the bed that was closest to the closet. Now the closet is about 10 feet away from the bed. So my body is asleep, right? But I did reach a certain stage of consciousness where I was aware that I was sleeping but my body was still fully under. But I believe my eyes were open. Either that or I was looking with my astral eyes, I'm not too sure. As I was laying on the bed, with my head turned towards the closet, my eyes or my astral eyes being open, that's when I saw it. I saw this thing crawl out of the closet. Now, this thing wasn't human. It didn't look human. It was kind of an ambiguous, kind of white shape, but it had some human distinct features. That's actually the definition of creepy. One of the things that makes something creepy is that it has a human aspect to it, but it's not completely human. That's why when you look at dolls, that's why when you look at 
things that seem human but not completely human, it creeps you out. So this thing, it crawled out of the closet. And the way it crawled, it was just so bizarre. It was just so creepy. It was just so intense. But the worst part about it was I could do nothing but just watch it crawl towards me. Like, I just didn't have enough time to react. That's it. I wasn't paralyzed. I've never actually experienced sleep paralysis. But this thing, when it crawled towards me, was just radiating this sort of fear. I could just feel it throughout my entire body. It's like, you know how whenever you dream or whenever you're in an altered state of consciousness, whatever you experience can amplify your emotions just by tenfold. That's what I was feeling. I was feeling fear and the emotions were just spiked up. And it was, I've never felt anything like that before. So this thing crawled towards me and it slowly began to crawl on top of me. And that's when the fear started to intensify. So right when it's on top of me, I just start to scream and I try to just hit it off. And apparently, so I ended up waking up my girlfriend. She actually had to hold me down. When I asked her what happened or what I was doing, she said that I was screaming for about 10 to 15 seconds. And the thing was, it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't just an ordinary scream. It was like a cry for help. She said that when I was flailing, when I was like trying, like when I was like moving my arms, it was like I was fighting for my life. And apparently I was kicking too. I ended up scratching her. With this thing, with whatever it was that crawled on top of me, I have literally, I have never felt this form of fear before. I have never felt this form of despair before. I have never felt this feeling of helplessness. After it was over, after I processed what exactly just happened, I couldn't sleep for the next four hours. I couldn't relax. I couldn't close my eyes. I had to leave the lights on. And my girlfriend and I switched positions on the bed so that she was actually closer to the closet and I was on the side that was furthest away from the closet. I just couldn't close my eyes because I was just so afraid of seeing that thing just crawl towards me again. It was extremely, extremely frightening and even traumatizing. I mean, to be honest, to this day, like I'm still sort of traumatized. I'm still kind of frightened, but at the same time, I do feel a lot better, but I'll get into that. So back to Scout. I told Scout the entire story of what I experienced and I told him about, I also told him about the synchronistic events that actually led to his place. He actually laughed because when I told him about the pairs, the Bartlett pairs, he would actually make references about those pairs on his uh, radio station. He would jokingly say how like uh, the brand name of pairs was influenced by him. So when I told him about the story, what I asked him was, so if this thing that I saw was not evil, then how do I face my fears? He smiled and he said, ah, that's a good question. He took a deep breath and then he said, oh, let me see. So he'll do this thing where he closes his eyes, he'll put his hands out and he will go into this sort of trance state so, as he closed his eyes, and as he got into this little trance state, he started to give me a little information about, I guess, potentially what I experienced. He said that 
Sometimes when we're asleep, sometimes in our dreams, our subconscious fears can make themselves present to us. Sometimes the collective consciousness can create fears that present themselves to us in the form of thought forms. Sometimes the entities or the monsters that we think we see are nothing more than just fear itself. And sometimes, sometimes when an individual passes on, sometimes that individual may have nothing more to them than that fear that they held on to. And then that's how they present themselves as fear once they cross over. Now as for you, what you experienced, no, I don't believe it was fear that you experienced. I believe that it was an actual entity. I believe that it was an actual being. So then I actually asked him. I asked him, okay, so is it is it attached to me? Is it inside me? Uh, is this gonna happen again? Is it following me around? I would actually, ha- actually rather have it inside me just because I don't want to watch it crawl towards me again. I don't ever want to see that. That's, that's creepy. I'm kind of joking about that, but at the same time telling the truth. So then Scout continued to breathe. He continued to look into it. And then he told me, he told me about how sometimes, sometimes when a human crosses over and sometimes when they become lost or sometimes they lose sight of themselves, they'll actually form attachments to individuals just to experience real life again or to experience the human experience what he said was interestingly enough what this thing was doing was even though it was attached to me it was actually a lot more attached to my girlfriend and it wasn't just attached to me and it just wasn't attached to my girlfriend but it was actually threading itself through 18 different people he said he didn't care who the 18 different people were he just knew that it was threading itself through these different people in order to experience human life, in order to experience human experiences. That's the best way I could put it. Scout actually did this exercise with me. He told me to visualize that I was experiencing the same thing again. And he told me to witness the entire event, but this time, instead of actually being inside the event, to witness the event from a third person perspective uh, with a distance, with a detachment while looking at the event. Now, he asked me, while looking at this thing crawling out of the closet in a detached state, he asked me, what does it look like now, looking at this thing uh, detached? And I told him, it looks It actually looks more human. And then he said, okay, what else do you see? And then I actually told him, well, it actually, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of seeing myself a bit of myself in it. I, uh, it's probably because my friend told me that it was nothing more than a subconscious fear appearing in my dreams. And then he shook his head and he said, no, that's not it. I looked at it again and it actually started to shrink. It actually started to get smaller. And then Scout started to smile and said, yes, these things, this projection that you saw, what you saw and what this entity wanted you to see, what this entity was projecting with all of its fear that it had inside of itself, that's not its true form. What you saw wasn't what it actually is. So interestingly enough, Scout actually asked me, he said, while he was in his trance state, he actually said to me, all right, I'm going to try and get rid of this thing. So I'm gonna be talking to you. You may talk to it, but just sit there and bear it with me. Uh, He kind of said, he said something along those lines, loosely put. 
I'm grabbing this whole story from my memories. So while he was interacting with the entity, he actually kind of laughed and he said, whenever you deal with these sort of negative entities, it's like dealing with five-year-olds. They can be so possessive, they can be so childish. And then Scout proceeded to say what he got from that entity was, this is mine. This has always been mine. The house has always been mine. And then he actually laughed and he said, oh, come on, the house hasn't always been there. Come on, give me a break. So then Scout asked me, interestingly enough, he asked me, so are you willing to get rid of this entity? Are you willing to let this entity go so that it may move forward into the light, so that it may stop living a partial experience of trying to experience the human experience through multiple different people? Are you willing to let this, this thing go so that it may experience its whole self in the light? Are you willing to let this thing go so that it may let itself go into love? And then I told him yes. And then he repeated the same thing for my girlfriend. Do you believe that if she was here, would she be willing to let this thing go into love so that it may rejoin with its whole self, so that it may stop experiencing a partial experience of what it is experiencing in this world? And I said, yes, I'm willing to let it go. So then in his trance state, he breathed deeply and he told me, he told me to envision a bright white light. He told me to envision my own orb, my own light orb, my essence of who I am. And he told me to envision that orb, that light, just starting to get brighter and brighter and filled with white light and filled with white love. And so I envisioned that. And then when everything was completely bright and everything was white and filled with love, he then said, it is done. So everything that I just experienced with Scout, everything that he told me about this entity and its purpose and its intentions and everything I was experiencing around it, some of you who I guess aren't really into that type of thing might call bullshit. You might say, you know what? He's just telling you exactly what you want to hear. And to be honest, I don't know if he was or not. But what's most important is that he actually helped me to come to an understanding of whatever I experienced. And most importantly, he helped me to let go of whatever I experienced. Now, don't get me wrong. There's still a part of me that for a moment when I close my eyes, I'll feel a little bit edgy. I'll feel a little bit paranoid that something's going to come get me. But that, that feeling will f soon pass and then uh, I'll just start to relax. So that was my experience. That was my experience with this entity, this thing, whatever I experienced. And talking with Scott was cool. He didn't just give me advice spiritually. He actually gave me some practical career advice. Like one of those practical pieces of advice for careers is don't just write down your bullet list point on your resume of what the job details like entail. Write down everything that you actually did do on the job. Write down everything that you did do on the job if you know that you can do it again. And if you did it once, you can definitely do it again. He gave me actually a lot of a lot of career advice. One more thing that Scout told me about career advice uh, that I feel like it's really important to share with you is it doesn't matter what you're doing, it's how you do it. You don't have to worry about what it is you have to do. You don't have to worry about if it's the right job, if it's the right career, if you're in the right place. You have to fully dive into it 110%, whatever you experience. You have to fully dive in to whatever career that you're choosing at the moment. And through doing that, without questioning whether it's the right or wrong thing, through putting your whole entire heart into it, that will determine your next step with whether to continue it or not. 
and the steps will reveal themselves. All you have to do is fully pour yourself into whatever you're doing at the moment, and that will lead to the next step. So that just about wraps everything up. I hope you got a lot of great information out of that. I hope that you enjoyed that. So if everything I just told you about really interested you, or if you happen to have any friends that really could, you know, listen to this video about this experience, because I know I'm not the only person who's ever experienced this, uh, then please share it with your friends. Uh, subscribe to this channel, like this video. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next adventure. Peace.